Welcome back. In this video, we are going to finish chapter 3 by covering the last section about compound Poisson processes. But as an introduction, let us consider a very important case, the case of a sum of a random number of independent random variables. This was a question in the graded project number 2, where you were asked to simulate such random variables uh, in some particular cases. So we have here uh, a non-negative integer valued random variable capital N, and we have a sequence ZI of independent and identically distributed random variables that are also independent of N. And we consider the random variable capital X, which is by definition the sum of ZI, I from one to capital N. So here, unlike uh, the the sums that you considered in second year, uh, the number is random. The number of random variables is random. Okay. So, and of course, we said if n equals zero, we said just x equals zero. And this is important for uh, an actual science because an insurance company may use such kind of random variables to model the total claim. Uh, the company has to pay. So, uh, for example, n if n represents the number of car accidents in a year, and z sub i represents the claim of accident number i, of course we assume that the claims are independent, then x, this total sum of the claims, is the total claim that the company has to pay overall. Okay, so estimating this random variable is very important for the insurance company. And so, let us establish two important properties. Uh, in general, the distribution of X is hard to compute uh, from the knowledge of the distribution of ZI. Okay? So, this is why we usually uh, do Monte Carlo simulations to simulate this, uh, this kind of random values. However, there are two important properties uh, giving the expectation and the variance of this kind of random values. Okay, the first equation is known as Wald equation. It's very simple to state. It says that the expected value of x is just the product of the expected value of n and any one of these independent random variables zi, z1, z2, n. And you have a similar formula for the variance. The variance of x is the sum of two terms. The first term is the square the square of the expectation of Z1, or Zi, times the variance of N, plus the variance of any one of these random variables times the expected value of N. So I'm going to prove just equation one that you were asked to check, actually, in uh, the project uh, by using the important notion of conditional expectation okay, that you learned in uh, last semester. And for the second one, uh, you can see the proof, for example, in the notes of Ellen Gerard that are available online. Okay, so, but it's the same principle. So, of course, x is a function of n, so it's natural to condition on n. So, we compute the conditional expectation of x given that capital N equal to some uh, non negative integer small n. Okay, so here, capital N is the random variable, and small n is just a number. It could be 1, 2, 3, 0. So we just plug x, replace x by its values, the sum from i equal 1 to capital N. So capital N is random, but we condition on the event that capital N has a fixed, a fixed value, small n. So therefore, we can replace the cap, capital N by small n. Okay, and so the sum becomes sum from i from 1 to small n, which is the fixed number in this reasoning, given that capital N equal n. And now we know that conditional expectations are linear, so the expectation of the sum is the sum of the expectations. And now we use the assumption that zi is independent on n. Okay, so the expected value of zi given that capital N equal n is simply the expected value of zi. So, and now this is the same because it's just a constant because the zi are identically distributed. So this is just ez1 plus ez1 plus ez1 n times. So this is just n times ez1 or n times ez2, same thing. 
So, and by, a, by some properties of the conditional expectation, uh, we can conclude that the expected value of X, given the random variable capital N, is simply the expected value of Z1, which is a constant here, times the random variable capital N. So it's just a multiple of the random variable N. Of course, the conditional expectation is a random variable, okay, not a number, unlike the unconditional expectation. So EZ1 is, a, is just a constant, but E of X given N is a random variable. Okay, But we know that uh, the expected value of X is the same as the expected value of the conditional expectation. Of X. So this is a fundamental property of expectations. And now we plug, we replace the conditional expectation by its value, which is just a multiple of N, so constant times N. So I can put the constant outside by linearity, and you are left with just the, ex the expected value of N. So this is just constant times constant. So now the, conditional, the unconditional expectation is just a number. It's, it's constant. Okay. And formula number two can be proved analogously. Okay. So having done this, we can now move to the definition of a compound Poisson process. Instead of uh, summing uh, from one to, cap to a random variable capital N, we may allow N to depend on time. So it becomes a stochastic process now. Okay? So uh, a stochastic process X of T is called a Poisson process if it can be written as a sum of independent IID random variables from one to capital N of T. So it's just the same thing, but we allow now N to depend on time. So it becomes, instead of just one random variable, it becomes a stochastic process, and therefore the summation becomes a stochastic process as well. Okay, this is what we call the compound Poisson process. <clears throat> okay, so here, uh, this is also important for an insurance company. So N of T may represent the total number of accidents between time t0 and time t, and time t, so on the interval 0 t, and z i may represent the claim of the ith accident. So in this case, x of t will represent the total amount of claims that the company has to pay by time t, so or in the interval 0 t. And so if we apply Wald's formula, we get the same thing. If we have, if n of t is a Poisson process of indensity lambda t, so non-homogeneous, but could, it could be homogeneous, and X of T is a compound Poisson process uh, as above, so, so X of T is defined by this formula. Then the first equation in the previous position becomes that the expected value of X of T is just the integral from 0 to T, because this is just the expected value of N of T. Okay? So if lambda is a constant, this is just lambda T times the expected value of Z1. So just... Uh, replace n by n of t for any t. And the second equation is actually similar. So if you, if you apply the previous proposition, you will convince yourselves that we have these two formulas. And now I'm going, I'm going to give an example where we will apply these two formulas. So suppose that car accidents happen according to a Poisson process with intensity two accidents per week. And suppose that the claims of accidents are independent and follow an exponential distribution with rate 10 to the power minus 3. So the mean value is 10 to the power 3 in this case, because it's 1 over lambda. Find the mean and standard deviation of the total amount of claims during a year. Okay, so if N of T is a Poisson process of intensity 2, so constant, homogeneous, and Zi is the claim of accident number i, and X of t is the total amount of claims, then the total amount of claims is just the sum of each individual claim. Okay, so Zi, by assumption, follows an exponential distribution uh, with parameter 10 to the, minus, to the power minus 3, and just X of t is the sum of all these small contributions. Okay, so X of T is a compound Poisson process, and therefore, here it's easy to compute. In order to apply the previous formulas, we have just to compute the variance and the expectation of each ZI. So as we said, since ZI follows an exponential distribution uh, of rate 10 to the power minus 3, then 
the mean value or the expected value of the die is just one over 10 to the power one. So it's just one top thousand, and therefore the variance is the square here. So it's one over lambda squared, as you know from uh, a previous probability course. So the variance of an exponential distribution is just one over lambda squared. So it's 10 to the power of six. Therefore, the expected value of the square of the i is just the square of the expectation plus the variance. Because the variance is just e z i squared minus e z i to the square, as you know. So it's 2 million. Therefore, the first formula, so here, since lambda is constant, so it's just the integral from 0 to 52, because 52 weeks in a year, there are 52 weeks in a year. So it's just the integral from 0 to 52 of 2 dx. So it's just 2 times 52 times the expectation of z i, which is 1,000. So we get $104,000. So this is the expected value of the total claim in a year. Yeah, this is the amount that the company has to pay on average. And if you apply the second formula, so here again, the integral is just uh, 2 times 52. And uh, we can, inside the parentheses, we have just either e z i squared, which is 2 uh, million, or the same thing. It's just the, the variance plus the expected value squared. Okay? So these two are equal. So it's just 2 million. So we get uh, 208 millions. And when we take the square root, we get a standard deviation of about $14,000. Okay. So this concludes the example and the short video and therefore the whole chapter. Thank you for your attention and in the next video I'm going to uh, explain practicum uh, number seven uh, about simulation of Poisson processes.